instructions that uh, you need to follow in order to get your deposit back. And cleaning an apartment right the first time is very important to do so. Uh, there's apartments that are older apartments, newer apartments. This particular apartment was built in the early 2000s, about 2003-2006 time period. But I really uh, don't want your deposit. Uh, your deposit is set forth for the performances and obligations under the rental agreement. Uh, you cannot apply it to your last month's rent, but if you don't clean your apartment right the first time, then you're going to be charged, and uh, the charges could be pretty stiff. Um, <clears throat> the first thing that you need to, to do when cleaning your apartment right the first time is start from the ceiling. You, you clean the, the light fixture and all the dust and everything off the light fixture, and then you move out to the corners of the uh, room that you're in and you clean all the cobwebs. So you start from the ceiling, the light fixtures, out to the corners and you get all the cobwebs and then you start moving down. Uh, in a, an apartment like this, in a kitchen, you, you'll have blinds, you're going to have to dust those. Uh, there's um, a frame around the window at times in, in your rental property that will have dust on the top of it. You'll need to clean that. Uh, you'll need to clean on top of the, the cabinets. You'll need to clean each cabinet shelf uh, in the, in the uh, kitchen. Now you don't want to push all the dust and the crud back into the corners of the uh, cabinets. Uh, you will be charged if you do that. So then you come down and then you get the dust off of the, the light uh, outlets, you know, the, the plugs and the switches. There's going to be dust on the, the rim of those little fixtures here. Of course, you have the, the window sills and also the window uh, gutters and so forth. So you will start from the top and work your way down. And as you work your way down, you wipe everything out. It would be a good idea also to vacuum inside the, uh, the cabinets, back in the corners. Um, if we see anything in the corners, uh, we will uh, charge you uh, for cleaning. So then you, you work your way down, and if there's any splash guards, you want to take care of the dust and crud on that. You come down and you work on the... Uh, fixtures. <clears throat> now, a lot of times people will just ignore that and think that it's okay just to ignore it, but it's actually, actually not. <clears throat> There's going to be water spots, hard water spots on, on the fixtures, and you want to make sure that you get those off. Now, if, the, if it's chrome, you don't want to use heavy abrasive, uh, like, you know, scotch bright or something like that to take off the uh, hard water spots. Uh, there's many ways of doing that. You can Google ways to, to get hard water off of uh, fixtures. But you need to have it clean right the first time. And then once you uh, work your way down, you're going to do that with every cabinet. You're going to do it also with the uh, vent, the stove vent. There's going to be crud and dust. You can just wipe your hand across that and you can, you'll be able to fill the crud that's left over from the, the time that he's lived in the property. Also underneath, you'll be able to feel sticky, uh, tacky, sticky mess. That needs to be clean. As you work your way down, <coughs> you'll need to pull out the stove. If it's a built-in stove, you can't do that. But you'll need to pull out the stove and clean every section of the stove. There's uh, you know, underneath this area too. Stove grip pans, uh, the knobs. These knobs here, they can they can come off. And you want to soak those in, uh, you know, liquid soap or whatever. But then you work your way down. Uh, you clean the stove, the oven, things like that. I have bit, uh, extra videos and information outside of this video frame that will help you uh, with ideas on the stove. You're going to need to clean all the drawers. You don't want to just 
quickly wipe things out and push everything into the corners because you will be charged. Um, also, when you open up the, the dishwasher door, there, there's going to be crud on the dishwasher door. So you need to take care of that. Now, as far as the countertops go, a lot of individuals will just serpentine when they clean. And we don't want that because if we come in and look on an angle, and we see a serpentine with a dirty rag that you've used and you've never changed. You need several rags actually when, when cleaning your place right the first time. But you can look on, for example, this countertop and look on an angle and there, there is no serpentine uh, motion. You go from top to bottom, left to right. Uh, on cabinets, there's going to be crud and stuff here. You go from top to bottom, left to right. None of this serpentine stuff, and you're done. So it's extremely important to uh, follow the process when cleaning your place right the first time. Okay, now you're uh, you're finished with all the <coughs> the the drawers and so forth in the in the room that you're working on. Now you're going to come to the baseboards. And of course, you're going to have outlets, electrical outlets, that you want to get the dust off of those uh, little ledges on the, the face plates and so forth. And also the dust on top of the door frames. Now, when you get down close to the floor, you're going to have a ton of dust, most likely, on your baseboards. And we will charge you if you have dust on your baseboards. So you need to clean those right the first time as well. Uh, with uh, bedrooms and stuff like that, you do the same process that I explained here. Uh, you won't have any cabinets, most likely in a bedroom, but you need to start from the ceiling, the light fixtures, out to the outside, out to the corners, uh, the frames around the doors, all the way down the, the windows, the blinds, the gutters, uh, the window sill, uh, the outlet covers, uh, the light switches all the way down to the baseboard, you clean the baseboard, and then of course inside the closet and so forth. None of, no serpentining with uh, your cleaning methods on the face of the doors. Um, so once you're, you're finished with the bedroom, you shut that door and you do not go back into it again. Uh, the same way with uh, the other, other rooms. The last room that you actually want to clean uh, is probably the living room as you exit the, the door going out. So, um, again, there's other video and information outside of this video frame. And again, we do not want your deposit. Um, it's a pain in the neck expediting all that stuff. But if we have to, we will use your deposit in cleaning the place right the first time. And we do not allow any spot cleaning. Spot cleaning is when you get a bunch of people over and they're bouncing around from room to room trying to uh, spot clean. Uh, spot cleaning does not work and it will never work um, at all. So you do it in a systematically method. You start in one of the rooms, light fixtures, outside corners, walls, down to the baseboard and so forth and all the other little tiny things that you need to do. Uh, this apartment uh, is, is quite old, but it's always cleaned right the first time. Uh, the tenants who moved out of this apartment actually had to pay uh, part of their deposit towards uh, cleaning, and they did not follow the move out process uh, that was given uh, to you on the top of your lease. I want to thank you for renting from us, and um, if there's any questions that you may have, it's all found in the move out process. Uh, there is no need to really have a walkthrough with you uh, when, when you're finished cleaning. Uh, and the reason why is if you cleaned right the first time, as instructed in this video, and also uh, this, uh, all the links outside of this video frame, if you did it right the first time, it's, a walkthrough is not necessary. So, um, you should have some uh, checklists, cleaning checklists and so forth in uh, this web page. And I again appreciate you renting from us. Thank you and make it a great day.